can't read anymore. How about you? Okay, let me explain. I recently joined Threads and I know yet another social media platform who needs it and so on. But I found it quite pleasant actually. I don't know if people are equally tired and behave differently on Threads for that reason. But there was an interesting discussion about reading. And there was someone asking, why would you read an ebook versus a book? And so about Kindles or Kobos. So the main discussion was about e-readers. And I found myself thinking about it, right? So why would I prefer one or the other? And I think I found one, at least one possible reason for that, for myself. And I want to hear your reasons for choosing one or the other. In that discussion, there was no mention to audiobooks, but I will mention those as well. Hello everybody, this is Rael, and I used to read constantly as a child and as a teenager. I was the kid that had a book in her hand all the time, especially fantasy, that was my main genre. But I mean, I kept going to the library, so the school had the library and we could get one book per week or something, like there was a limit, and I was there every single week. And luckily at home we also had quite a vast library, even though those were more like classics or yeah, quite random books that maybe a teenager wouldn't read. And it took a while for me to be able to afford books, so new books, but I was still enjoying the process of walking in a bookstore and browsing and touching the books and reading what is this about, looking at covers. So that was one of my main hobbies. And then when I was finally able to afford a book, for instance with the money that I had saved from a birthday gift or something, it would take me a month or so to decide which book was worth my money, even if it was 5 euros, because that's the money we're talking about. And that's how I found one of my favorite authors, Rezard Kapuscinski. I hope I said it more or less as it should be, I'm not sure. But Kapuscinski was a writer in the genre of, I think it's called literary reportage or literary journalism. I heard both, which probably is quite niche. I mean, on booktube and bookstagram, you don't really hear about that genre or I haven't found anybody talking about that. But that used to be one of my favorite things. Fantasy was still the main one, but Kapuscinski was one of my favorite authors. And I found him just browsing in the bookstore in the travel section, I think. So there was no social media for that at the time, or maybe, maybe there was Facebook, but I never had Facebook, so there wasn't a place for me to look for reviews. I kept reading all the time, until university. It disrupted all of my habits, everything I used to do changed. I used to be a morning person, I am definitely not a morning person anymore, and all of that. So it, the, the time when I started going to university changed entirely my routine and my being. And so in uni you were supposed to read books, textbooks, papers, and they are often boring or maybe in my case I had to attend, I don't know, courses I wasn't really interested in but they were mandatory so I would just go for it and that slowly killed my interest in reading and my ability to read for pleasure. So there was no time for reading. I still had the craving for books that are fiction as opposed to the ones that I had to read for uni. The only exception is that since I was studying languages and literatures, I had a couple of courses in which I could read fiction. One in particular was Anglo-American literature, which I loved. That's where I found this. I found out about Edgar Allan Poe, 
which wasn't a thing, like we weren't taught much about Anglo-American literature or for that matter English literature in, um, in Italian high schools. So this was a new thing for me and these were the books that we were reading for that course for instance. So this one and many more like The Great Gatsby, I don't know, all those you Americans are familiar with. I don't know about the other countries, but in Italy this is not really fundamental. And I loved those classes, but that was the only course in which I was reading fiction. After uni, as soon as I started working, I no longer had time to spend on books. So I was so exhausted after work that I couldn't get myself to read anymore. Until a certain point, my mum had a bonus for which she could uh, purchase a Kindle, but she wasn't interested in that because she had no idea like ebooks, what is this and why would I do that? So she gifted it to me and I discovered ebooks. And I realized that ebooks were easier for me to read. And it took me a while to understand why. So as I was answering this question on the threads discussion, just last week or something, I realized that one of the reasons why I enjoy ebooks and I am able to finish entire books is that I cannot see the amount of pages I am supposed to read. And so I'm not discouraged by how chunky a book is. And I just go page by page, not forcing myself more than needed. And I found myself reading shorter and longer books. It didn't matter. And so for a while I was in between jobs. So that was also a thing so I didn't have the pressure of going to work eight hours a day or something. And ebooks were also cheaper, so that was great for me. And it lasted for a while until... I started my PhD, which again completely ruined my ability to read. Since starting the PhD, I think I was able to finish one ebook or two. I mean, one was Trevor Noah's Born a Crime, so that was one of the best books I've ever read and I couldn't put it down. But again, that was an ebook and it was at the very beginning of my PhD. And then again, it wasn't possible at all. At some point, I still wanted to know about fantasy and sci-fi and what's going on, which are the new stories. And since movies and TV shows in those genres are often disappointing or, I don't know, there's not enough for me, I wanted to hear at least about books. So I started following a few booktubers and I specifically enjoyed the vlogs or the reviews in which they would spoil the entire story because <laughs> I knew I wasn't able to read those books, especially those lengthy series. And one of these booktubers gave a couple of recommendations for books that were maybe easier to get into or I don't know, I kept hearing about those titles and I was curious. So I tried to purchase again a couple of physical books, completely failed. And I mean, one I had to give away because I realized it wasn't me, it was the book, the problem, it was 1Q84. I have no idea why people say they like it. There's no reason for liking it, in my opinion. And another one I can't remember. I tried a couple more ebooks, I couldn't do it. Until I got into audiobooks. To be fair, the first audiobooks I listened to were Harry Potter. So the entire Harry Potter series I had never read before and I started listening to those while I was prepping for moving to Finland. So I was again in between jobs and I 
had the time to listen to something but I didn't have any time to sit down because I had to pack everything and so I listened to the entire series and I think it was thanks to Stephen Fry's narration because I mean it's astonishing and I've been looking for more audiobooks narrated by him but I couldn't find books that I was interested in enough among those that he narrated. And so I still tried a couple of audiobooks while doing the PhD and those were fantasy. I managed to finish those and that was a huge success for me. That's why I tried to purchase new books as well. I, I thought, okay, maybe I can do this. After that series, I listened to Babel or Babel however you pronounce it, just because I thought, come on, it's linguistics, it's dark academia, it's right up my alley, it should be good, right? And fantasy. And it was good for the first maybe half or for the first third of the book, and then I lost interest, but I was able to finish it just because it was an audiobook and I was traveling, that's the other thing. So while I'm doing other things, that's a great option for me, audiobooks. And just recently I picked up an ebook that I had downloaded but I wasn't able to read and it came out last year and it's again a fantasy and I finally found the interest in this book. It hooked me and I was, yes, finally I can do this. Because I thought, now that I'm unemployed, I have plenty of time, I should be able to read, right? But no, because there are two scenarios. So the first one is, I sit down with this ebook, I start reading and my brain goes nuts. Basically, my brain starts saying, oh, but you should be doing your chores, you should be searching for a job right now, you should be improving your skills, you should be on the laptop, as I am all day. So every time I'm not on the laptop trying to improve my situation and change things up, I feel extremely guilty. Or even when I go for a walk, like once a week, I still feel guilty and I should be doing more. And as soon as I sit down with a book, regardless if it's an ebook, audiobook, or physical one, my brain like kills me. It, it just keeps telling me you're wrong, you should be doing this, this and that. You're not allowed to be enjoying this story. So that's one scenario. And what happens in the end, I just start panicking. And to prevent a panic attack, I have to stand up and do something. The other scenario is I finally give myself permission to read because I've done all possible chores, I've worked on a laptop all day, I am allowed to read and that's when I <laughs> fall asleep. So as soon as I get interested in, I don't know, I, I manage to read a couple of pages and I fall asleep. And then it's even worse because when I wake up, it was a nap because it was maybe, I don't know, in the middle of the afternoon. And so I woke up with a headache, nausea, and the entire day was ruined by this little nap. This is the effect that naps have on me, and I know that. But whenever I read, I either get this panic or extremely sleepy and I'm not able to finish a book. Even though I'm interested in this book, I want to know how it goes. So now I need to actively fight to peacefully read. But I used to be the kid who kept reading all day long, all night long. I used to fall asleep reading books. I used to read several chapters before falling asleep and now it's just a few pages. Now I want to know, am I the only one who experienced this downfall <laughs> and this 
complete inability to read and to focus enough on a book even though I was able to do that. I'm not talking about someone who has never enjoyed reading. Reading was my main activity as a kid and a teenager. And I noticed that summers are still my favorite time to try to read, probably because it's connected to, again, school and university. It was the only time in which I could get a break and so I could get back into reading. But I want to know, do you have the same problem? And if you had the same problem and you solved it, I want to know how you solved it. I want to know which is your favorite format to read. So is it ebooks? Do you read on Kindle or Kobo or some other e-reader? This one is so old, it's falling apart. It's like eight or 10 years old. Of course, I'm keeping it for as long as possible. And when it will be absolutely necessary, I might switch to a Kobo and try that instead because I heard positive reviews about Kobo. So I don't know, let me know what's your favorite e-reader if you read ebooks. And if you prefer physical books, what's your favorite? Paperback or hardcover? And if you are ah, instead into audiobooks. First, what do you think about the whole issue of oh, but listening to audiobooks is not the same as reading, which personally I think it's nonsense. I mean, there are studies that confirm that the same benefits that children get from reading themselves are received through listening to audiobooks. So if I find this study, I will link it. But especially if you're an adult who has, I don't know, a job, a family, so many things to take care of, how do you manage to read if you still find the time and the energy and the ability to focus on books? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Look at me sometimes.